You're good. Okay. So, um, one thing that's really special about Ruby is that everything is an object. And an object, I thought of a nice little analogy. Think of that you're like a secret society member. You just joined the society and you know nothing about it. But they give you a book. And they say, every time somebody tells you to do something, just look in the book so you see what to do. So that's an object, right? And a method, uh, in Ruby, methods are, um, they're used with the metaphor of message passing. So every time you call a method, it's basically like you write something down on a piece of paper and hand it to somebody, and then they look in their book and see what to do. So those are um, some metaphors to get us started. A class is an object that knows how to make other objects. And it's really important that the, a class is also an object. So the class and the objects that it makes are closely related, but they can't do any of the same things. Some, the class has its class methods, and the object has what's called instance methods. And they're all defined in the same place. But the distinction is that some are only available to the class, and the rest are only available to the instances. So um, this is how you define a class. You start off with this word, class, and then you give it a name, which usually starts with a capital letter. Pretty much always starts with a capital letter. And then you have to uh, use this end keyword so that um, the interpreter knows where when you've finished um, with that class. And then the way you make an instance is with this method called new. Um, okay. So let's give this class a method. So you use the same end keyword to delineate the end of the method. And uh, for now, we don't need to do anything. So when we run this, it says I just slapped something. And that's because when I ran the file, it started at the top and went all the way to the bottom. So you don't need to compile or anything? No. Ruby never needs to be compiled. That's right. It's an interpreted language, never compiled. And that um, gives you a lot, the opportunity to do a lot more stuff in real time. Um, OK. And then let's give this a class method so you can see what that looks like. So I use this self keyword at the beginning of the method name to show that it's a class method. Another way you could do that would be to actually um, write the name of the class right in there. That might be a little bit uh, more obvious what you're doing when you're starting out. And So when I call that method, it's going to give me this big list of other methods that, um, and this is a list of methods that are available to like every object. So one way that I wanted to clean this up, make it a little bit um, more uh, clear what's going on. Okay, so you see here, it, it lists out the method that we defined for the class. Now, what I'm doing here, new, remember, I can use that method to create an instance. So when I call this in the context of the class itself, it will create a, an instance and then send this message to that object. And it basically has this array of methods, which is like a container with a bunch of uh, words in it, which are the names of the methods. So object is sort of the 
the basic default and it has a bunch of things that are useful in, you know, in, a, in a general way. It's a bunch of things that are there for you so you don't have to do them yourself. And so I just took this list of all the methods that an instance can do and I subtracted out the things that are just general purpose for all objects. So now we have this class method called local methods which just it gives a list of all the things that an instance can actually do. So this is a demonstration of another really great thing about Ruby which is called reflection. And what that means is that like an object can know what it is, like as if it were looking in a mirror. It can know what it is and it can also know some of the things that it can do. Okay, now I'm going to save this. Documents. So IRB is a really awesome tool, especially when you're starting out, but even, even when you're advanced, you still use it every day. And it stands for Interactive Ruby. So this require, require is how you like load a file, and it will run the file and like define all the classes that are there. Actually, this file also it doesn't have just have the class definition, it also has this uh, code down here, and that also got run when we loaded the file. So now that I've loaded this file, I can um, use the class that's in there. And this this syntax here with the hash and the brackets is like uh, it shows that there, there's an object there. And then I can do things like. Um, Another really great kind of reflection, besides knowing what an object is, is knowing what it can do. So I can ask it if it can do this method, and it says yes. I can ask it if it can do something else, and it says no. So um, sometimes it's not always easy to see all the different things that an object can do, because they may come from a lot of different files. But this is a great way to go interactive and just ask it what it can do because that's usually a very reliable way to uh, figure out what you're dealing with. So, remember that Ruby is never compiled, it just goes from top to bottom. So if I were to move this stuff up to the top and try to run it, it wouldn't work because it says uninitialized constant slapper. And what that means is that when I say slapper.new, it's like, well, okay, I know a message to send, but I don't know where to send it because I haven't yet created this object, which is a class that has the method new. Okay. So Ruby is characterized by a lot of flexibility. And one of the great things about that is that it allows you to reuse things um, in a lot of ways. Instead of like creating something new, a lot of times you can reuse something that you already have. And the paradigm that I want to show you is called callbacks. So a callback is basically like a string around your finger that helps you remember to do something. Like every time you do this, make sure to do this first. And the way that it's implemented is with an empty method that does nothing, right? So the method does nothing, but you're still calling it every time you do something else. So that way, when you want to make a variation of this class, You can change what the callback does 